What's up guys, what's going on? I'm Paul, this is Pauline Theology, and I'm back. We're going through Ephesians chapter 4, and we're on verse 7. One verse today, and it'll be short like that for a couple of uh, episodes, because this stuff is going to get kind of um, weird or crazy, but we're going to discuss it, see what it's talking about, and we'll f- we'll find out what it means. That's the beauty of studying scripture, especially when we study in a community. So on a side note, a little extra tip today, guys, man, it's good that we are studying the scriptures together through this devotion as we are learning a little bit more about scripture, but we are keeping ourselves under um, the what what uh, Luther would say, a handmaiden, that uh, reading these texts and uh, studying other books about this and then listening to other people guide us and help us as we continue to understand and study the scripture. So that's a good thing, guys. Anyway, let's jump on in. If you haven't read chapter seven or sorry, if you haven't read verse seven, chapter four, go ahead and stop the tape, check it out, see what it has to say, come back and we'll discuss the four questions. And if you have, man, let's go ahead and dive on in. What's uh, verse four or verse? Oh, man, they got me messed up today, guys. Sorry about that. But what does chapter four, verse seven say? It says for each one of us, Grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we talked a little bit on earlier episodes about the unity of believers, that we are called together as diverse people to edify each other and come into one uniform body, which is the church, which is the bride, Christ. And so this here is just a not a symptom but it definitely is a uh, part of what God is doing in order to build up the church. It says grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we have a grace, a gift that is given. This word grace is charis. And uh, it's also a um, kind of like a similar type of noun to what we see in First Corinthians and Romans, which are called, most people understand them as spiritual gifts, but they're actually called grace gifts. They're, they're charismas, uh, uh, charismas, which is from the root word charis, which means grace. And so these gifts that God has given to each of us, we all have as we have come into this family. And the reason for these gifts, we're going to find out later, is for the edification of the church. And so it doesn't just say that we are gaining these gifts. So uh, it says that there is a gift, the Doreas, that is the gift that God has given us, which is also um, kind of alluding to, because Paul is using this other word type of word for a gift rather uh, um, than charis. But he is saying that this gift also aligns with the gift that he has been given. It says grace was given to him a gift to be able to serve the Gentiles. And so he's kind of um, stacking this up with the gifts that we receive from Christ. Okay, and so whatever gift that it is you receive, we run as Paul ran. Paul ran fully even unto jail time, locked up because of the gift that God had given him by his grace. And so for us to receive this gift that we get as well from Christ, we've been set apart for a purpose. It's incumbent upon us, man. It's important for us to actually use this gift for the edification of the church. And one final thing, though, it says the measure of the gift. Sometimes I think that we feel like what we do is not important. If we read later on, uh, well, earlier on, depending on how you're looking at the Bible, if you're looking at it as page book to book or if you're looking at it in the time it was written. But I digress. As we read in First Corinthians, Paul talks about the body being a uniform members and that each member is important, necessary for the building up. It says there's an eye, there's a foot, there's a hand, there's all sorts of parts. And each part has a role to play. And I feel like sometimes we think that because we may not have the, the beautiful parts, the, the seemingly important parts that we feel like we are less than. But see, that's the whole point of, of Paul when he is writing this letter in respects to there is no uh, uh, like we have unity in the body. He says there's no boasting that can happen. It's because it's not anything that we have gifted ourselves with. Go back and check that out, out that episode. But I'm, I'm going to say a little bit real quick. 
is that this boasting is not in our own ability. It's not in the things that we can do because it is a gift of God. These gifts that God has given us according to the measure that Christ decides to give us. And when he gives us these gifts, then we are to use them to the fullest, whether it be the the what we would esteem the smallest gift or if it's what others would esteem be the greatest gift. But whatever gift that God has given you is a gift that God himself, the Christ, has given you. And that means it's supremely important. And so the gift that we get, which is so important as we do it, as we accomplish the task that God has called us to accomplish, then we are fulfilling what he has called us to do, our purpose in life, which should give us joy, abundant joy. And it gives the Lord joy. It gives God joy because we are using the things that he's given us. Anyway, what's this say about God? Well, that God gives grace. The Father gives grace through Christ. We haven't read it yet, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. It's for the edification of the church. This letter that we're reading about is basically it's a calling. It tells us what our identity is. It's a big major theme in this book that we are reading. And our identity is being the church, being the body of Christ. And so when Paul talks about the gifts that God gives each of us according to that measure, then he is saying it's for the edification of the church. So God gives grace through Christ to build his church up. What's it say about man? Well, we receive gifts from Christ. Each of us, man. Jesus has a portion to us, each a gift. If you don't know that gift, man, you got to find out. What is it in your heart that, um, yeah, I'm moving on in application. So how can we apply these truths to our lives? Is that, uh, man, you know your gift. Figure out what your gift is that God has given you. If you're in Christ, you have one. He just said it. He says he is apportion each of us a gift. So if you don't know your gift, find out what it is. There's stuff you could take online. There's spiritual, um, um, there's spiritual uh, gifts tests. Um, and then there's also other, other, other ways. But for me, what I always think is what gives you most joy when you do things? Do you love caring for people? Do you love serving people? Well, then service could be it. Do you love uh, teaching? Do you love um, sh showing how to let others understand the scriptures better? It could be teaching. Do you, do you love to give, man? Do you love to give of your time, your money, just whatever you can you want to give? Well, maybe it's giving. A list of these are in Corinthians and in, um, I believe, in Corinthians, in uh, Peter and... I will have to put the rest in the show notes. I can't recall. And Romans, Corinthians, Peter, and Romans. But I'll put them in the show notes so that you guys know. And I'll also put in the show notes a, a, a link to maybe a, a spiritual gifts test if you guys want to try that. But I encourage you to because if you don't know them, know them. Because God's given you them for a reason so that you can use them to build up the church. I appreciate you guys for listening. And I will see you in the next episode.